Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. Soon after Adam and Eve ate the fruit, God came walking through the garden looking for them. They became frightened and they hid themselves from God. Why did they do that? Well, it's because they knew that they just what they just did was wrong and they had committed a sin. This is what we're going to talk about today in this devotion. Let's first start with the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us, Father. And we thank you for working through our salvation. So that way, when you come back, you will take us to all for all eternity, Lord. Lord, we ask that your spirit bless us as we deep as we dig into this devotion, Father. Please be with us. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Alright, true story. So I was probably about Eight years old, um, I was in the and was in the third grade, and I, I think I was cons- I was pretty much of a smart kid. I think uh, I kind of knew my stuff. The only problem was is that I was a little bit lazy. You know, I was not someone who really liked to do my work or my homework or whatever the case may be. And I found myself getting in trouble for it a lot um, between my teachers and my parents. I mean, if you know my parents, they'll tell you the truth. I was not one who really did my homework that easily. And so one time, um, teacher assigned some homework. Of course, Edwin being Edwin, didn't do it. And so the next day I go to school, didn't get my work done. The teacher goes ahead and writes a letter to my parents about how I am not doing my work. So I was supposed to <laughs> give the letter to my parents. Knowing that the letter was in my book bag, I hid it in my book bag and just make sure that, you know, my parents never got to see it. I show up to school the very next day. And when I noticed, um, you know, we got our morning routines done. We put our book bags in the closet. You know, we got our books out. We're sitting at our desk, pencil sharp and get it ready. And then the teacher asks, Edwin, where's the letter that I wrote you yesterday that you need to get signed by your parent? I was like, oh, yeah, 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 I got you. You know, grabbed my pen, went to to go to my book bag. Now, at the time, my classroom, it's kind of shaped like where your book bags were placed in like this big open walk in closet. And so I usually tend to put my book bag all the way in the corner where, you know, the door doesn't really open all the way that you could kind of see the corner. And so I opened the door, got into the closet. You know, I was eight, so it was pretty small. I got into the closet, you know, I found the letter, kind of whipped out the letter and quickly saw my parents' signature, my mother's specifically. Take the letter, confidently gives it to the teacher. Teacher opens up the letter, looks at it. Your mom didn't sign this. You did. My heart sank, dropped. And so then she proceeds. She takes me and we go to the front office. And so now the front office was not too far from the classroom. And then she dials the house number. My mom picks up the phone and she goes along, talks about how, you know, she sent home a letter to my parents talking about how I'm not doing my work. And then and then I go ahead and proceed to sign that letter myself. Now, you can imagine this was the longest day of my whole entire life. And so I begin to, you know, when the bus drops us off, I'm walking home. And, you know, my where the bus drops us off to where I used to live, I was probably like a two blocks. And, you know, from the apartment building, um, we were always on the top floor. And my mom could always see from the building, from the window, when the bus drops us off. And then she'll keep, keep an eye as I'm walking home. Well, the bus drops us off. And normally, you know, when I get off the bus, you know, I quickly get home. You know, go in, open the door, walk my way up the stairs and get in the house. That day, I was in no rush. You know, the bus drops us off and I just... You know, just kind of walked, took it one step at a time, you know, because I know exactly what was coming for me once I get home. And in my mind, what's the rush? Why rush it? Because I know my life is about to be over once I get inside the house. 
So I'm walking, taking my time, taking my time. You know, I open the bottom door of the lobby of the apartment building, and we're always all the way up in the fourth floor. <laughs> I took every step, counted each one, you know, turned the corner, took another flight of step. I mean, it's just, I was not in a rush. Why? Because I knew what was coming for me. I get home, you know, I said hi to my mom. She looked at me. Mm. I was like, dang, I know I'm screwed. Um, I remember my godmother comes by to pick up my little god sister, you know, and I said hi to her. And, you know, she looked at me. Mm. I knew I was screwed. But the person I was really afraid of, simply because, you know, I knew that my mother was not going to do anything about it. But I knew that soon after the call from my teacher, she was going to call my father. And it's going to be my father who was going to give the death sentence. And, you know, he was at work still and he's going to make his way home. And so he finally comes home. I remember being in the bedroom. And, you know, anyone who's grown up in a, in a Haitian household, you know, the one mortal sin is not to say hi to your parents. You know, he walks into the door and I was not exactly in a rush to say hi to him because I knew what was coming for me. But I mean, I was already in trouble with school. And for me not to go say hi to my parents when they come home, I mean, uh, woo, I would not be here making these videos if, if I chose not to. But I got up, you know, I didn't even run to my dad like I usually do. You know, I kind of uh, kind of walk a little slowly. Hi, hi, dad. You know, and gave him a hug and a kiss, you know, just praying that he just doesn't beat me right then and there. But, you know, long story short, <clears throat> I got what I deserved. But when you think about this, you know, really what I was really trying to do is hide from what, from, um, hide from my parents because I knew what I did was wrong. Okay. And this is exactly what Adam and Eve was doing when God was walking through the garden, they were trying to hide from him because they knew exactly what they did was wrong. Let's look into the Bible and see exactly what happened. Genesis 3 verse 8 states this, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Adam and Eve knew that what they just did was wrong because if they did it, they would not have been hiding away from God. And when they finally confronted God, they were casting blame on each other. I mean, Adam said, it's the woman that you gave me that gave me the fruit to eat. I mean, can you imagine Adam on the slick was blaming God for what just took place? I mean, he said, the woman that you gave me made me eat of the fruit. It's interesting how sin so quickly corrupted the minds and the personalities of Adam and Eve. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 14, Paul reminds us that it was not Adam who was deceived. It was Eve. Now, hear me out. I'm not trying to sound misogynistic. I mean, but I can only imagine the horror in Adam's face when Eve came back to him offering the fruit from the tree. I mean, when we look at the context of Genesis chapter 3, it appears that Adam was not present when the devil was tempting Eve. Adam must have understood that his companion, I mean his helpmeet, had transgressed the command of God, disregarded the only thing that God told him not to do as a test of their fidelity and love. And he must have struggled in his mind and he must have um, mourned and regretting letting Eve ever wander from his side. But the deed is done and sadly, I mean, he must be separated from her whose companionship has been his only joy or has been one of his joys. Adam enjoyed the company of God, company of the holy angels. Um, but all that was lost in the sight of losing his love, his wife, his Eve. She was part of himself, the bones of my bones, the flesh of my flesh. And I can only imagine that finally he thought to himself, if she must die, I will die with her. 
It's so interesting, prior to sin, Adam is considering a, an act of selflessness. And after sin, he goes out and starts blaming her for his actions. The Bible makes it clear. Adam was not deceived. I mean, he ate the fruit knowingly that it was wrong. And this is just to show us and to be careful of how people will try to defend themselves even after knowingly committing a sin, committing a crime. This should be a lesson to us. When we commit a sin, we are only the ones at fault. And we should take the blame and not try to defend ourselves. By defending ourselves, all we're trying to do is cast our sins to someone else or to something else. God cannot be tricked. He knows the manner of the heart. In fact, when God approaches Adam and Eve, he asks them a very rhetorical question. Where are you? Now, of course, God knew the answers to those questions. I mean, his questions was just a way to ask and to benefit of the guilty, to help them realize what they have done, and yet at the same time to lead them to repentance and salvation. And from the moment humans sinned, the Lord was working for their salvation, working for their redemption. In fact, the whole scenario reflects the idea of investigative judgment, which begins with the judge who interrogates the culprit to prepare him for the sentence. But he does it also to prompt repentance, which will ultimately lead to salvation. And we notice this is the theme all throughout the Bible. Then God announces the death sentence of Satan and at the same time, the hope of salvation for humans. In Genesis 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offering, offspring and your offspring, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. God has been working on our salvations from the very beginning. And even though we messed up, he is doing all that he can to draw us back to himself. Say to God, keep the faith.